Kavita Govi, Consultant Obstetrician, Women Children Hospital, Asta, Whitefield, Bengaluru. So today's topic is about fetal growth restriction. So what is fetal growth restriction or sometimes we call it as FGR or intrauterine growth restrictions or IUGR. So it's a confusing terminology. So basically what you understand is, doctor, my baby is not growing well. Why is it not growing well? Did I not eat well? Did I not, you know, take care of myself well? So what exactly went wrong? Why is the baby not growing well? This is a common question which we face during our uh, uh, OBD sessions. So let's look into to it as to what can be the causes and is there anything that can be done so a baby we ascertain a baby's growth potential that means this baby should grow you know we are, i'm expecting this baby to be about three kgs or i'm expecting this baby to about 3.5 kgs or i'm expecting this baby to be about 2.5 to 3 kgs so that is the growth potential which i assess for the fetus so when it is falling down the growth potential that means if the weight of the fetus is less than the 10th centile we here talk about centiles so this is where everybody gets confused used centiles or totally different i'm very sure you guys can understand the centiles by looking at the population graphs generally we keep we we make these centiles looking at the population so for indian population what is the centiles so what is the fifth centile what is 95th centile what is 50th centile so we always talk in terms of centiles when we look at your ultrasounds so don't get confused so anything less than the 10th centile growth the baby's abdominal circumference the chuppiness or i would always put it around the umbilicus when they measure it by the ultrasound abdominal circumference we call it again in centiles if it's falling below the 10th centile or the weight of the baby per se is falling below the 10th centile then we call it as an uh, fetally uh, growth restricted baby or something is not matching up with the weights of the baby so we have to look into it into depth so why does this happen why does the uh, uh, the growth restriction happen so sometimes it happens less than 32 weeks itself that is called the early growth restriction sometimes it happens after 32 weeks it's called the late growth restriction early or late it doesn't matter always the mother is worried ki, why why did my baby uh, you know stop growing or why is my baby not growing or why is it not reaching the growth potential so there can be many reasons so most of them are worried about uh, infections that is torch infections or infections to the fetus so generally that may not be the reason because uh, the latest guidelines also say torch infections may not contribute to uh, the growth restriction per se but sometimes yes infections can cause the baby to not put on weight not thrive inside most of the times it is the placenta so that is the placenta is the connection between the mother and the fetus the placenta is the one which gets stuck to the uterus and derives all the blood supply and then sends it through the cord to the baby so the placental factors or the placental insufficiency is the one which causes a lot of problems and that is the one which refuses to feed the baby and does not allow the baby to thrive inside. So how do I measure this? How do I know? Okay. So uh, why did not we pick it up early? Why did why was the problem uh, you know picked up late? Sometimes we will not be able to you know just measure you and say that everything is okay. We may require an ultrasound and frequent ultrasounds may not be necessary for all the patients so how do we do this when we come to the you know, this uh, ultrasounds or the OPD so after 20 weeks so I'm sure you all know seven weeks we do a gestational scan where we ascertain how much is your fetus size and when is your expected date of delivery so seventh week and twelfth week we do confirm the expected date of delivery so that is a dating scan so we have dated you so this is when your uh, delivery is supposed to happen so that's about 40 weeks. We take that as a benchmark and each time when you get a scan then we always compare it with that expected date of delivery. So it does not keep changing very frequently from 20 weeks I give you one, 24 weeks I give you one expected date of delivery. That does not happen. So by looking at 7 and 12 week scan we give a consolidated date of delivery. So at 20 weeks, we check if the fetus has got any abnormalities, that is the uh, uterine anomalies, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, the uh, abnormalities to the fetus. And also we look at the uterine artery blood supply. So whether the blood supply is happening to the fetus or not. So that is where we talk about Dopplers. So this Dopplers, when we talk about Dopplers, we are measuring the pressure in the uterine artery. We are seeing whether the baby is getting enough blood supply or not. We even do it at 12 weeks. We do it at 20 weeks. So there are certain 
uh, blood vessels which we look at first is from the mother we, uh, this is to simplify things from the mother we check a few blood supplies and within the baby we check something so from the mother we look for the uterine artery blood supplies or the blue uterine artery doppler and then we look at the umbilical artery or uh, that is for the baby and the middle cerebral artery again inside the baby's brain so each time when you come certain parameters are taken into consideration so that is why ultrasounds are very important to guide us about what is going what are we expecting for this fetus later in the pregnancy so at 12 weeks if at all we find a problem with the uterine artery dopplers we try to generally give a medication called as aspirin uh, so that is very important to take it if it is less than 14 weeks it's got lovely uh, effect on the uh, placenta and it helps the placenta to give good blood supply to the fetus or rather it gives good food to the fetus so it's important to do your 12th week scan as well as the 20th week scan and then we have a baseline so everything was good all this was fine but still my baby did not grow well after some point of time so we start measuring you each time at 24 weeks will be your next visit and then when we start measuring you with a tape that is called a sylphysio fundal height generally we go by that and we also go by the history of the mother suppose the mother is a low risk mother so it does not have any complications she's all fine then we do not do anything we go about the sylphysio fundal height you fall into that if you are a high risk mother, for example, you have uh, blood pressure, you have diabetes, you have uh, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome or certain kind of antibodies going on or any uh, hypertensive disorders other than the, uh, 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 the uh, uh, problems relating to the blood supply, then we ask you to go for ultrasounds. Most of the times it is we, we assess you by ultrasounds. The ultrasounds will be quite frequent. But otherwise, if you are a low risk mother, I generally look at the symphysio height if anything is falling less than what I'm expecting and then that's when we ask you for an ultrasound otherwise it is generally detected by the early pregnant early growth scan which we do it somewhere between 28 to 30 weeks if we detect the baby is not growing that well at that point of time or the fluid around the baby is less then we keep calling you very frequently and it is also called as early onset FGR and we have to take a decision depending on how the baby is growing inside how the blood supplies are reaching the fetus there's no point in you know waiting or keeping the baby inside and damaging the fetus if we bring the baby out and start feeding the fetus that is much better for the fetus in certain cases so it's always it always depends on the ultrasound findings and how the baby is growing and you may have frequent ultrasounds when we think that you have fetal growth restriction can it happen late everything was fine till 36 weeks my ultrasound showed a 3 kg baby and then by uh, when i delivered at 40 it was hardly 2.5 kg yes it can happen even at that time the placenta can give up even at that time and it may not supply good uh, it may not be giving good blood supply to the fetus at that time the fetus may lose whatever weight it has gained inside it can also lose that weight or or it can also start going in for fetal growth restriction after 36 weeks so uh, any time it is possible so it's it's better you go for regular antenatal checkups to find out this kind of problems and sometimes the first timers will have a shock that you know 30 weeks baby is hardly 700 800 grams so what exactly went wrong it should have been 1.2 to 1.3 cages it is possible that we will be finding out by ultrasound the first time and then we investigate you if you have any antiphospholipid antibody syndrome or whether is there any other contributing factors to the growth of the fetus your 12th week scan would have been good your 20th week scan would have been good but then at 30th week we find something to be abnormal so we find we do certain tests and we try to see that it does not uh, you know affect the fetus in a uh, wrong way and we also take the previous history suppose you had a FGR fetus the first pregnancy the recurrence in the second pregnancy is quite common so with the history we always try to give you some medications to keep the baby safe in this pregnancy also so regular ultrasounds and regular antenatal checkups is very important to identify the problem of fetal growth restriction if we do not identify it or if we do not take action at the right time then there may be a long-term effect on the fetus so it's it's important that you get regular antenatal checkups done regular ultrasounds done and it is for the sake of you and your fetus thank you so much